Okay, you guys, Dr. Mindy here and dopamine fasting. That is the topic of this video. Listen all the way through to this video because I want you to understand that many of you right now, you're not filled with joy and happiness because you're dopamine resistant. Just like you got insulin resistant, you can get dopamine resistant. And on this video, I'm gonna show you how to undo that resistance and how to undo it quickly. So sit tight. Okay. So I really want to dive into a topic that I personally have been obsessing on and I see it with my patients. I'm uh, in some interesting conversations with some of my colleagues on it. I'm here in Silicon Valley and a lot of people are talking about it here and in the overstimulated over tech world. And that is, do you need a dopamine fast? So Let's talk about what the heck a dopamine fast is. I did, if you've been following my channel, uh, you know I did a video on mental strategies uh, to handle fasting, and I talked about this topic of dopamine fasting in that video. So go back and, and listen to some of the science behind dopamine and, and how we are addicted to this chemical in our body. But why dopamine fasting is getting so much attention right now is that we literally are living in an instant gratification world. We can get anything at our fingertips. We can watch our favorite Netflix series for you know a whole weekend if we want. We don't have to wait for the next week for that the next episode to come out. We can go to, to Amazon and, and, and have anything sent to us the next day. We can, get, we can text a friend and get on our phone and immediately get a response back. And all of this instant gratification is causing these spikes in dopamine into our body and into our brain. And just like many of you that are here are really um, concerned about insulin resistance, I'm personally concerned about dopamine resistance because I see it in my patients, I see it in the sense that people are struggling with joy. And the, the way that when I dive deep with a patient, we start going back into their history of their health and we talk about what they're dealing with today, the health crisis they might be dealing with today. Um, one of my favorite questions to ask is, do you feel like you're experiencing joy like you used to experience it? And I tell you, eight out of 10 times people go, no, there's nothing for me to not be joyful about. I just don't have that elated, excited feeling that I used to have in my younger years. Well, that's dopamine resistance. So if we go back and we look at insulin resistance, what did we do to get out of insulin resistance? We stopped the insulin from coming. So what do you do to get out of dopamine resistance? You're gonna have to stop, slow that dopamine down a little bit. And this is where this is not fun, just probably like when you first came and, and tried to understand insulin resistance, you might've thought it wasn't fun. Well, luckily uh, with dopamine resistance, those receptor sites will repair much quicker. So I'm gonna give you some strategies on how we can kick you out of dopamine resistance. So, but I really want you to see that we are living today in a world where so many people are getting too much dopamine. So, okay. Let's talk about what dopamine is. There's some really cool chemicals in your brain. Uh, serotonin is, is the neurotransmitter that just puts us in a good mood. Um, we've got GABA, great neurotransmitter when your ketones go up, your GABA kicks in, that will calm the brain. So we've got, uh, and then we've got dopamine. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter of reward and motivation. And so when you get a, when uh, let's just say uh, you get a text from a friend, you send a friend a text and all of a sudden you get a ding and you, and immediately your brain goes, oh, my friend texted me back. That ding is giving you a dopamine, a, a surge of dopamine in your brain. When you can go to Amazon and you can order something and have it show up at your door the next day, there's so much satisfaction in that. It's a reward. It's getting, you're getting that, um, extra dopamine that gets pushed into those receptor sites in the brain. These receptor sites are very fragile. So when they start to get too much dopamine, they shut off. The analogy I use is it's like a sea anemone, where if you touch the sea anemone, it'll close up. It's the same thing, like the dopamine receptor sites, as dopamine is flooding into those receptor sites, it, it contracts and it, and it shuts down. 
So, and now it can't take as much dopamine in. So what you end up doing is you're trying to find more ways to bring in dopamine. So you can find it through food, your favorite food. You could find it through, you know, another uh, a night of binge watching your favorite Netflix story or series. You, you go searching for it because even the little things that used to bring you dopamine are not doing the job because these re receptor sites have, have shriveled up and the dopamine's not getting in. So you go searching for bigger and badder and more heightened dopamine experiences. So we wanna put you on a dopamine fast and what that looks like, unfortunately, is you gotta start by just taking all that stimulus out. So the Netflix series, the Amazon, the um, you know whatever it is, I, the analogy I always use is that I love social media, as you guys know. I love interacting with you. And oftentimes at a stoplight, I'll just be sitting there and I'm like, oh, okay, well, let me see what's going on on my phone. And I'll pick up my phone and start looking at all the different social media platforms. I'll look at email. I'll try to answer email at the, at the stoplight. And so before I had a phone, I never did that. So those are, this is an opportunity now for me to put the phone away, sit there at the stoplight and be a little bored. So when you do a dopamine fast, boredom is actually kind of key. You got to take dopamine, the dopamine stimulants, stimulants out of your diet, out of your mind. So get your, put your phone down. Uh, stop uh, binge watching on TV, you, food, get, get rid of your favorite foods. And you do it for a short period of time. And when you've done it for a short period of time, what happens is the dopamine stops coming at those receptor sites. And all of a sudden those receptor sites will start to open back up. And as they open back up, now they are more, more available for the dopamine that you are secreting. Now, here's where fasting kicks in. So I tell you all of that to get to the bulk of fasting because we know that fasting can actually repair these receptor sites really well. And there was a really cool study, I will put it in the, in the notes for you guys, um, that they found that food restriction increases dopamine receptors. And it's specifically what they call the D2 receptors. And they found that people who were obese actually had these less of these receptors. Well, that makes sense because when we've been using food as our dopamine source and constantly using food as our dopamine source, the same principle is happening. We're flooding the, the receptor sites and they're shriveling up. So when they went to go measure receptor sites on people who were overweight, they found that they had less of them. So what the, this article shows, and I'll, and I'll read you the, the um, the final line of the study, this was a study done back in 2007. They found that when you restrict food intake, you can increase the number of D2 receptors. Um, and that they also went on to say that those D2 receptors are slowing down as we age more, probably because we have more stimulus of dopamine. So fasting is a beautiful way when you're taking the food away. And this is something for you guys to think about when you're struggling with fasting. It's like you're struggling because that dopamine's not coming in. But the beautiful side of that is that the dope, you're, you're repairing those receptor sites. So when you do eat again, when you do decide to go back to Amazon and, sh and uh, Amazon Prime and have it sent to you the next day, when you do decide to go back to checking your phone at the stoplight, watching the Netflix series, when you decide to go back to these activities, what will happen is these receptor sites are open. So dopamine fasting, it's a really cool concept. It definitely should be brought into your uh, into your, your, your fasting lifestyle, as I put it here. Um, it definitely can be the, the entry to give you more joy. And it's something I think that, you know, honestly, I think we should all be aware of. So there you go. That's dopamine fasting, really interesting concept. Brand new, we're talking a lot about it here in Silicon Valley. Uh, and you guys have the opportunity to slow that dopamine down, put in a 24 hour fast, repair those dopamine receptor sites. Um, and see if your joy comes back. So let me know if that helps. Let me know if you've tried dopamine fasting. 
put it in the comments. Um, and we're gonna dive into this, by the way, in the new year. I've got a big event coming up in January and a day long event called the Re uh, Reset Experience. And we're gonna talk more about dopamine and how we can recalibrate our dopamine. So if you want information on that event, just put the Reset Experience and we'll send you info on that. So hope that helps.